up in Indiana. We're going to play the first hole. It's 390 yards long. There's a big knob right out there in the middle of the fairway. That's our target. Let's see if we can make a par on this hard par four to start things off with. This is a Tim Liddy design. It's a great golf course. We're going to have a great time today. Here we go. Ah, right down the right center of the fairway. Perfect tee shot. We're going to go chase that down. We're going to make a four on this hole today. All right, so we hit a great tee shot. As you can see, we aimed to right that big knob right there in the middle of the fairway. We hit it right at it. We're right in the middle of the fairway. We're in a great spot. Got 133 yards left to the flag. Because we haven't had a whole lot of rain, we're going to try to hit this about at 125. Depends on the front half of the green uh, on about, let's say, call 15 paces or so. So we want to land this ball just short, let it take one big hop, hopefully to grab the green, trickle up next to the hole. So I've got out my pitching wedge today. We're going to try to hit this about 125 to 128, somewhere in that neighborhood. It'll hop that green and hopefully land somewhere and stop near you know, near the hole somewhere. The other thing is the wind's kind of cutting across uh, the green a little bit, and this fairway runs slightly from up here to down here, slightly uh, uh, on a little angle towards us. So everything's going to help this ball move to the left. So we want to make sure that we use that to our advantage. So we're going to aim slightly to the right of this flag. All right, so pitching wedge. Aim slightly to the right. Make sure that we set up for the slip coming at us. So I'm going to play this ball slightly middle of my stance. Make sure it's in the middle of my stance. Nice aggressive swing. Looking for 125. Oh, that's a good looking shot right there. Just short of the flag. Ooh, rolled up there about eight or nine feet or so. Let's take a look when we get up there. That's a great shot right there. Let's see if we can make a birdie. What do you say? All right, let's go. Okay, so what I wanted to show you right here in front of my putter is where my ball uh, made a dip. Okay, and that ball mark right there, we always want to fix. And I'm going to show you how to fix that here in just a second. But as we pan up just a little bit, you can see where my ball is there. And that's about, oh, let's call it about seven or eight feet away from the flag stick. So we hit just about 10 or 12, maybe 12, eh, about 18, 20 feet away from the flag, which is about what we were expecting to do. And then that trickled out, took that one hop and stopped, you know, up there about, uh, you know, eight to 10 feet away from the flag, which is exactly what we were looking to do. So I'm gonna move this camera back just a little bit here. And we're gonna focus on this ball mark here. A lot of people don't, <coughs> excuse me, know, exactly how to fix uh, ball marks on the green. So I want to go through this real quickly. The one thing you never want to do when we fix a ball mark is to take a, a tee or a, an object and, and pull up like this. You never want to expose the root structure on a green. The first thing that happens when you do that is you actually kill the root structure or that particular patch and I don't know if you can see this one right over here, but this one right in front of my putter is Brown's patch where someone has actually taken their tee or, or their divot repair tool and stuck it in the ground and flipped it up like this and actually exposed the roots that are underneath the ground. What we want to do is we want to take our, and I use a tee, I don't even buy uh, or use, you know, the forked prongs. Um, a lot of people have those and it's great to use and they're fine as well. I use a straight up tee. I push it down on the outside rim of the circle of the, the divot and I push inward just around the edges, okay? Just move it towards the center of where the hole is, just like this, just around the circle. Nothing crazy, just push it together so you're pushing those holes, you know, the, the bigger hole that's in the middle, pushing the outside edges around. Then I take the middle of my putter, or the flat, flat part of my putter, and I push that down. You can see there's a little leaf right here that blew over when I was there fixing that. So now I'm going to take this camera and I'm going to show you right exactly where, whoops, I moved that camera too much, where that divot was and you can't even see anything there now. So that's how I want you guys to start fixing uh, your ball marks, okay? Uh, very important that you don't expose the root structure 
whenever you start fixing ball marks. As soon as we do that, it actually kills that portion of the green and uh, makes our job and, and our superintendent's jobs a lot more uh, difficult. So push it in from the outside, work around a circle, put it down with your putter. You can actually step on it with your uh, foot. That's fine too. Eh, I just use your putter. Works, works really well. And now that's repaired, you can putt right over that surface, no big deal. All right, this putt right here. Now, reading greens, we'll get into that as we go through um, more of our lessons as we go through um, uh, these different um, you know, lessons and stuff as we go along. But as you can see, this is not a very long putt. I am a big fan for most people to leave the flag in. If you're in competition, I personally take the flag out. I'm going to leave it in for this case because it's easier to see on the camera. Um, but in, on this particular putt, uh, Tim Liddy, when he designed this golf course, is a big fan of Pete Dye. He actually worked for Pete Dye, and Pete Dye has a big influence on these greens. And you'll see as we play these holes, I have a lot of trouble reading our greens out here, and most people do. There are very subtle breaks around these greens, and for what it looks like on one side, it doesn't look the same from the other side. So I always try to take my first read. That's my advice when I tell people how to read putts out here. So my first read on this particular putt, it looks to me like it's going to break a little bit to the left. So I'm going to play this kind of on the inside left edge of the hole, somewhere in this neighborhood. I'm going to play a nice firm putt. Let's try to make birdie. Be very happy with par, but let's see if we can't make a birdie. And I missed it. It did come left at the very end, but boy, it was a good try, wasn't it? Make my par and move on to hole number two. Well, I hope you enjoyed Knuckles' knowledge for our first time out here today. We played the first hole, 390 yard par four, a great opening hole. It's difficult, but it's not overly challenging to at least give yourself a chance to make a good opening par. The second hole, yeah, things start getting a little more fun. It's a nice par five, a big creek runs through the middle. We'll play that the next time on Knuckles Knowledge. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you all season long right here at Knuckles Knowledge. Give me your comments, give me your feedback, tell me what you want to know and what you want to learn, and we'll get them right here for more Knuckles Knowledge. Until next time, have a great day. Get out and play some golf. It's beautiful out here. Come see. Me.